You are listening to Toronto's only pure metal show, The Red Switch. Get you to introduce yourself and uh, what you do in the band. Yeah, I'm Henry. I'm the founder and uh, singer and guitar player in God Throne okay. since 1990. And uh, the cabin is on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tea is the, the, the tea is ready. <laughs> yeah. Ready. yeah. The perfect for a show. Okay. Um, now you're on the uh, War Propaganda Tour in North America and you're heading to Europe soon. How would you differentiate the crowds here, there, and in Europe? Well, there's not that much difference. Um, Actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, the venues are basically the same. You know, same type of venues, same type of metalheads, um, having a good time. And you know, uh, one evening everybody goes berserk, and the other evening people are standing still and watching. You know, yeah. and the same happens in Europe. Which isn't always uh, necessarily a bad thing because I find a lot of times when they're just standing there, they're just in awe of uh, you know what they've seen. Yeah. They're really impressed. Yeah, that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, it's just that in Europe we will have bigger crowds mm -hmm. because we play a lot in Europe. We're a bigger band over there. In the States and Canada, we're still an underground band. Yeah. I mean, this is the third tour since 2000, mm -hmm. so that's not quite a lot. But we try to be back more often from now on. So next year, April, we're going to tour with Overkill, Invader, and some other bands. And uh, next year, September, we all, we're also back for another tour. So hopefully that will give us a bit of a bigger name. This year. Good. Perfect. All right, now the Le Netherlands has a rich history of the uh, Dutch Golden Age. Uh, what kind of history does it have uh, for metal? For metal? Well, I think... Um, We've had a band like Vengeance, I don't know if you ever heard about them. It was like an hard rock band, it was one of the first bands who became well known on an international level. Vandenberg was one of them. Adrian Vandenberg later joined Whitesnake, so he's uh, well known. And then later on we had uh, some death metal bands that became really famous, like Gorefest, Pestilence, Asphyx. And, uh, and then us and Sinister and bands like that. Um, for the writing process of Ashdale, did you as a band believe that you had the duty to retell the story of Ashdale? The duty? No, not the duty, but you know, our former guitar player Isaac De La Haye, he lives in Iper, which is close to the village of Ashdale. Uh, when I was there, I saw all the war cemeteries, war memorial signs, and it was really impressive. So on a day we went to the museum, the World War One museum, and that was really impressive. So I thought, like, maybe I can do some research and write a, a concept album about World War One. On previous albums, I had always had like historical themes, but usually like one or two songs. But I'm a history freak, so yeah. this was my chance to do uh, an historical album, a concept album about World War One. And when I started doing research, I was even impressed more, because this war was pretty extreme. And I tried to uh, write songs in the, from a neutral point of view, because we play Germany, we play France, and, England, you know, and it, I don't want to end up in a situation where people feel offended. So I tried to write everything from a neutral point of view, and in the beginning, I thought like, okay, I hope the idea comes across because when you when you don't speak about English or German soldiers, it's kind of difficult. You know, it could be about a future war as well. That's what I thought. And yeah, then the reviews came and it was all positive. People uh, respond to me uh, very positive. You know, like they totally got the picture. And uh, so uh, probably did a good job. Going back home. To where you're from in the Netherlands, what was it like growing up in, in metal bands? Like, how did you uh, progress as a musician and that kind of thing? Because you've been around since uh, the 1990s, almost two decades now. Like, how have you progressed? Um, well, of course, we've become better musicians. I became a better songwriter. But like the basics of God the Throne have always stayed the same. We, we play a mixture between death, black, and fresh metal. Uh, there's always uh, a certain amount of melody in, in the songs, 
and that has never changed. Although the albums, you know, in you know, we changed uh, the, the songs. You know, every album has like a different feel. The in between the songs, so a lot of variation. But uh, the blueprint is always the same. Like this mixture with melodies. Yeah. Okay. Um, on your flight to Peru, there's a bit of uh, turbulence there. Uh, yeah. Are you guys freaking out? Well, it was scary. I mean, I. I Later on, I, well, I, I would say, out. sorry, interject. What was the exact situation for those that are not familiar? Yeah, we, we uh, took off from Brazil to uh, Peru, sure. and uh, yeah, there was so much turbulence. You know, the plane was like going crazy, like out of control. And uh, you, 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 if you were sitting in the in the back of the plane, you could actually see the the plane like all this, you yeah. know. Not like it was one fixed part, it was like, I don't know what happened. And it was so out of control, people were sweating, and everyone was like... <laughs> I'm pretty sure planes aren't supposed to be made of rubber. No, but you know what, it may add some notoriety to the to the group, because a lot of great bands in history have died on yeah. playing, you know, on planes. Well, you know, it crossed my mind <laughs> at that very moment. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was scary. I mean, uh, apparently it happens a lot in, in Brazil, so there seems to be a lot of turbulence. This was pretty extreme. So yeah, everybody was a little scared. So you, you guys went to Peru then? Yeah. What was that? Peru was nice to see, but it's like a third world country. So it was very poor. We are Western looking, very tall, uh, white compared to them. So we got a lot of attention. Uh, in a good way and in a bad way. You know, people want to have money. People try to steal. Uh, we had our equipment, not a lot, but still. Um, so it was it was nice to play. It was it was nice to see there's actually fans who know our music there, although we don't have an official distributor in those countries. Um, so it was a good experience. But then we traveled by bus, by public transport, from one place to the other. Uh, bus drives of like uh, almost 20 hours, driving next to the cliffs. You know, you can see for hundreds of meters below. And then afterwards, we heard that. Uh, that, that like four buses a week disappear off the cliffs. So that's a pretty scary story too. Yeah. yeah. On your last album, Passion Dub, there's uh, the intro song, The C Cross of the Sacrifice, yeah. uh, which has what sounds like a Japanese woman saying something. Do you know what she's saying? Yeah, I wrote it. Oh, really? Yeah, but I wrote it in English. Uh -huh. And it's a text saying, you know, actually Europe was, was in this weird <clears throat> kind of tension in between countries around 1914. And it's, um, it, it, I wrote that, uh, that Europe was on the brink of, uh, of destruction and like going into some, side of, some, some kind of suicide thing. Mm -hmm. I got it from a book somewhere. It was a guy who wrote some poetic stuff about, about Europe around the time the World War I started. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wrote that in English and she just translated it in Japanese and spoke that in the intro. So, okay, some people say, like, why is it Japanese? What has it got to do with World War One? Well, actually, Japan was involved in World War One. But the main thing I did it was because I figured if I would use a voice with, uh, that would be non-European or non-English, uh, it would bring a certain atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to the, to the intro, it brings up a lot of tension when I listen to it. And you have this creepy guitar and all the background noises and you hear a Japanese voice not knowing what she says, but you can hear she's bringing up tension. Yeah. And that was the exact meaning of the intro, and then the first song comes. It in. does add a little bit of like a frantic, sort of mysterious start yeah. to the entire album. It sets the tone. Yeah. And I found that the entire album, it's like a saga. It's almost like a journey from the beginning to the very end. Yeah. Sort of like World War One, yeah. where it starts, everyone's very unsure, no one knows, knows what's going on, but it finally ends with like a sort of like, like yeah. that's it yeah. and it sort of plays out like that would you say this album could sort of be played out uh, sort of like in a documentary style situation with World War One? that's what a producer in the studio also said when, when the album was finished he said like yeah, this is like listening to a soundtrack of a war movie yeah and well that was the meaning